Alrighty. Greetings from my kitchen. This is my refrigerator. It's the only whiteboard I have. Now, you asked a question about how fans create suction, and I could not find a graphic that I liked, so I wanted to answer it myself. To start with, I am not a physics professor or a physics teacher, although I do eventually want to be. I'm simply someone who took a class a few years ago, and this is my best explanation with the knowledge that I have retained. Now, there are two types of fans, a propeller and an impeller. A propeller pushes air and sucks it in from all around. An impeller does exactly the opposite. It throws it all out and it sucks air in. You want to know how that works. So I'm going to start by explaining how an airplane's wing works because that is something that I wanted to show you. So I'm going to start by drawing just my best design of an airplane wing. Uh, so that is decent there. I actually want to exaggerate that a little bit. Let's draw that a bit beefier to create the effect. There we go. So this is what an airplane's wing looks like. Now, in reality, the wing is shooting off in this direction. It's rushing forward through the air, and the air is just sitting still. But in terms of physics, it does not matter what object is the one moving. Uh, our frame of reference can change, and the physics still works out mostly the same, unless you get into quantum physics. This is not quantum physics. Anyway, point is... If the air is rushing this way and the wing is still, or if the wing is rushing this way and the air is still, it works the same. So, what happens is the air is coming in this way, and it sort of gets deflected a little bit by the plane wing. Right? And so this all gets deflected down. Now, you will notice that these lines spread out over here. And in fact, there's a low pressure zone right here that I was not able to draw very well. Uh, and then there is a high pressure zone right here. Now, you may have heard in physics that high pressure always flows toward low pressure. The same way if you have a water tank, right? And you have a lot of water here and a little bit of water here. This water is going to want to flow toward that water. That makes sense to you? Same way high pressure flows toward low pressure. This can be considered our high pressure, and this can be considered our low pressure. High pressure always flows to low pressure. That's how the world works. Nothing is actually sucking the air in. The high pressure air is being pushed into the low pressure. That is what's happening in any situation. So, that with this concept out of the way, I'm going to erase that so I have room to draw here. So. This high pressure wants to, and this airplane wing can be considered normal pressure. So the low pressure here, the plane wants, wing wants to move into that low pressure there. And this high pressure also wants to go that way. This is how lift is created on an airplane wing. Okay, and so what happens is the wing just goes in that direction. Now you've also got, let's not forget physics class, let's keep all of our forces in play here. So you've also got gravity pulling down in this direction. You've also got the engine pushing the plane wing in that direction. And so all these forces, by drawing these arrows end to end, let's draw this one here. And let's draw, um, get out of there. Let's draw this big one here, right? And then let's draw that little red one there. And so we take the tail of this and we go that way, and so we have our resulting vector there, and so we have an upward vector, and we have a forward vector. So that's how planes move forward and upward. Now you know how planes work. So, with that out of the way, a fan blade works very similarly, but not quite the same. I'm just going to erase these little vector arrows down here, because it's sort of in the way. Let's just leave that there. It's magnetic, it'll stay there. That way I won't lose it again. So, going back to our fan blade, you are probably familiar with this shape. You've got this big circle here, or maybe it's a box, right? And it's got the spindle in the middle, and it's got these big fan blades that go out this way, and they blow air this way towards your face. I'm limited by my two-dimensional interface here, and I'm describing three-dimensional physics, so bear with me. So air comes out towards your face, and it gets sucked from behind the fan, but it also gets sucked in from here, like I said earlier. Propellers just sort of suck air from anywhere, and they push it in one direction. 
So what happens here, if you, this is rotating sort of in this direction, right? And if you take this out and you flatten it out to a line, right? And so you'd sort of have like this bar with all these fan blades here. This is not a fa This is sort of if you took this and unwrapped it. And so what I'm going to turn this on its face here. And so I'm going to get these fan blades going this way. Right? And let's say that you want the air to go this way towards the front of the fan. This is towards your face because you want to stay cool in summer, right? And this is the back of the fan. And this is where you're pulling the air from because the walls on this box fan prevent that. As the air comes in here, an air particle is a lot smaller than a ball, but the forces work about the same, just on a much grander scale. So even though an air particle is much lighter than a ball, I can still use a ball to show you what's happening with the air. So, or, or just this marker. So again, the fan blade, or my hand in this case, is what's moving, right? But I can frame it by saying that this smacks into this. So if, if, if you had a ball that smacked into this at this angle, you would expect it to deflect that way, I think. You know, if you had, if you caught the edge here, you would expect it to deflect up that way. So that's sort of what's happening. Because it's a lot of tiny particles, what's actually happening is they're all moving together in a stream. This is how fluid dynamics works. It's a whole bunch of little things that act as a larger whole. Fun fact, marathon runners at the start of a marathon race behave very similarly to water. Anyway, so um, you've got this air that's being deflected here and deflected here and also deflected here. And it's being deflected by this fan blade, in fact, before it runs into this one and gets deflected that way. So you'll see the same, similar to this airplane wing, sort of on the other way here, you see the same low pressure here, and you'll see the same high pressure here. And, but, and because this is sort of down from the fan, it wants to go that way, and because this is up from the fan, wait, I've drawn that wrong. No, I haven't. No, it's correct. Uh, this is low pressure and it wants to pull the fan this way, and this is high pressure and it wants to push the fan that way. But the fan is fixed in place, usually by uh, just friction on your floor or it's mounted to your ceiling. And so the fan can't move, so the air has to move. So it pushes the air. Um, if this were on a plane or a boat, again, this is a propeller type of fan. The propeller, the prop on a plane or the prop on a boat is having this effect and so the water or the air is pushing the boat or the plane and that's a good thing in that case but in this case you want the air to move so you'll fix the fan in place this box fan is just sitting on your table or your floor wherever and it's pushing the air instead this is how a propeller works but this is not an answer to your question you want to know how to create suction so I'm going to erase all of this and I'm going to draw for you what an impeller looks like now an impeller is designed to throw air outward in any direction and suck it all towards the middle. So an impeller looks similar in design, but it's designed, the, the fan blade, instead of tilted at an awkward angle that I can't draw here, I actually can draw it. They're all straight up and down, but they go this way. And they sort of curve outward this way, right? They all curve outward this way. And so what happens here is these turn this direction and there's all sorts of air particles sitting in here right and they get pushed outward how it gets pushed outward is easier to show you if I use a different shape for this so I'm going to draw a different shape with this time with the blades just straight out so you can understand what's happening here now if you drive a car the brakes if you have disc brakes in your car, they actually work like this. They, they're self-venting disc brakes. They're, they've got two plates and there's a space in between uh, with fins that look like this. That as it spins, it pushes air through the brakes. And how that does that is, again, you've got all these, these particles of air in here. In fact, let me use green because I've been using green for air. Let me use green air particles here. You've got all this air in here. And this blade is going to push 
on this air. It's going to push it that way. Like my hand is going to smack this marker to the side. And the air is just going to head off in this direction. And nothing is going to tell it to turn, right? And the same thing's going to happen here. And this air is just going to head off in this direction. And nothing's going to tell it to turn. Same thing's going to happen here, right? And same thing's going to happen here. It's just going to go off. And you notice that they all end up outside of the fan blade. You've, if you've ever been on a merry-go-round, you've felt this force. As it spins, you feel like you get flung outward. Or those carnival rides where you feel like you're pinned to the wall. This is what's happening. It's not pushing you directly outward. But it's pushing you in a direction where your momentum carries you outside of the circle. So, with, with straight fans, you know, it just, you just spin it. And it flings the air outward. And what happens is because all that air is outward, now there's nothing here. Now you've got low pressure right there. That's how it creates the low pressure. It flings all the air out of the way, and you've got low pressure right there. Something has to fill that. And so this actually is left open on the front and the back for air to rush in. So if you drew it the other way, if you drew it this way, with all these fins this way, Air is being flung out here and here and this way. And you've got a low pressure zone in here and air is rushing in here. This is how they create suction. Now, why are these blades curved? Well, because they actually take advantage of an interesting effect. So I said with these straight fins that this could spin in either direction and this would work. These, you can actually change the direction. If you spin it this direction, so if you take my hand is flat here and it comes up and smacks this, well, no matter what, it's going to smack it that way. I can smack it this way as well, right? But by curving it, one thing happened. First of all, I could run this in reverse and I could scoop that air and suck it in and push it out the other way if I wanted to. So if I had a little box here, Let me use my eraser, it works much better, right? If I had a box here, I could actually suck air in here if I wanted to by running this the other way and push it out here because I could, I could scoop this. But it wouldn't be as powerful if I ran it the correct direction and I run it this way. And not only do I smack this, I accelerate it. It follows the curve and it rushes upward. As this rotates, right, you get a little bit of push here, but as this comes more upward, it still gets a deflection there. And so it actually pushes it straight up. And this air actually does pretty much get thrown straight out of there at a much more powerful force. And so all of this air is just being pushed outward. And so this would actually be, if this fan will run in that direction, this would be this way. It would be that way. And all that air would rush outward, and it would rush out this way. And so you would have a low pressure area right there. And that's your low pressure zone. So, why is this popular for vacuums? So you can see how this would be popular for filling up those big bounce houses that little kids jump on. But for vacuums, you, it's easy to look at the other orientation. See how the air is rushing in here? What if I took a hose and I attached it? right here and I just draw this little hose all the way over here right well I can use this hose that is very useful because air is going in this direction right that is a very useful hose right there I can use that to pull all the dust out of my carpet like a vacuum cleaner or I can use that to pull up all the dust in my uh, wood studio that is a very useful hose right there. So by flinging all this air outward and creating a low pressure zone in here, I can suck that in. And that's how it does it. It, put, it deflects all of the air. You've got this curved blade and all these air particles that are gonna deflect upward and deflect upward. And even as this tilts farther, it still gets deflected upward a little bit and it gets flung straight air. That is how these fans create such low pressures that can suck all sorts of things up. So I hope that this was a uh, good explanation for you. I hope this video is not terribly long and fortunately my camera has not frozen this time.
Ah, uh, this has been a 15-minute video. Whatever. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's how fans create suction. This is an impeller. The fan you might be familiar with, a box fan, is a propeller uh, that shows up on biplanes and motorboats and all that. But this is an impeller. This is the type that is more favorable for suction. And this is how it creates suction. And there's my little diagram of a wing to, so you can understand why this creates suction by deflecting air downward. Um, so yeah, hope that answers your question. And if this did not answer your question, feel free to message me and explain to me what you got lost on. I would love to explain this to you. I love teaching curious minds. Uh, so yeah, now I'm going to have to clean this up because my wife is not going to be happy if she sees the... Uh, well, actually, no, she actually loves watching me explain things. But she's probably not going to want this to stay like this forever. So I'm going to have to clean this up. I hope this was helpful.